Hello everyone, welcome back to Talking History. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you all keeping well. So last week I accidentally deleted the um, pre-recorded video I was going to put up because I'm such a clever clogs <laughs> and um, I was getting ahead of myself because James and I were going on holiday so I was getting all prepared. I, I was pre-filming, I was getting all ready and all I had to do was just set it to go up on Sunday and I was just going through and I was deleting old videos and I accidentally managed to delete that video. So I had no video to go up for Sunday. So apologies for that. Um, but anyway, I feel like we need to have a little bit of a catch up because it's been a while. And I think the last video I did, I said I was going to see Johannes of um, Strictly and oh my god he was incredible absolutely amazing that man has so much talent it is insane it was the show was it was beautiful it was emotional it was camp it was just brilliant and at the end it was full-on carnival mode he come out in his heels how that man dances his heels is, in, is beyond me they danced brilliantly in heels I mean, I can barely walk in the bubbies, let alone dance. But he was brilliant that he had the big feathers and the hats. Oh, it was just incredible. I absolutely loved it. It was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And anyway, and then last week, uh, James and I went to Cornwall for the week. And it, we had glorious weather, absolutely gorgeous weather. And I did get sunburned. But I burn very easily anyway. So, but it was just lovely. We had a lovely break. It was just what we needed. And so we are now back to normal reality and back to our normal routine. So here we are. Anyway, but I hope you've all been keeping well. Let me know how you how you all keeping. You know, make sure you're all keeping okay. But enough of me rambling. Let's get back into what you're all here for. You're here for history. And today we have finally made it. We have made it to the lady herself, Empress Matilda. I am doing this in two parts. So this is part one. So make sure you click that subscribe button so you don't miss part two. Anyway, let's get into the video. <laughs> Matilda was born in February 1102 and it's believed that she was born in Sutton Courtney in Oxfordshire. Now Matilda was born to King Henry I of England and Matilda of Scotland. Now her grandparents were William the Conqueror, Matilda of Flanders, Malcolm III of Scotland and Margaret of Wessex through which Matilda was a direct descendant from Alfred the Great. Matilda received an education uh, from her mother, uh, Matilda, um, both in academic and practical studies. And Matilda was also educated in how to be a queen consort. And Matilda would have had, probably would have had regular contact with her illegitimate siblings at court. When Matilda was eight years old in 1110, Matilda was betrothed to Henry V of Germany, who was 15 years her senior. And it was quite common for in the Middle Ages to become betrothed at a very young age. Now, the Roman Empire was not yet holy at this time. Point, but it was a very large and powerful realm. In the early 12th century, it had um, it, com it comprised um, the lands that are now Germany, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, Switzerland, Austria, the Czech Republic, and the northern half of Italy. Now, it also covered parts of Belgium, Eastern France, Western Poland and Slovenia. 
Now, the total population in the early 12th century was believed to be around six to seven million people. Now, Henry V had been crowned King of Germany in 1099 by his father, Henry IV, and he had succeeded to the imperial Im throne, uh, although he had not yet been crowned emperor in Rome. Henry was in conflict with the Pope and Henry was also short of money. So Henry sent a proposal to King Henry I of England for Matilda's hand in marriage as Henry I would also benefit greatly from this marriage alliance. Now, contracts were confirmed and signed on the 1st of June 1109. Matilda was to marry the Roman Emperor and with her, she would take a dowry of 10,000 marks. That was the same amount that her uncle, Robert Curthose, had sold his entire Duchy of Normandy to his brother, William Rufus, to go on the First Crusade 12 years earlier. Matilda was not once consulted, nor was the 15-year age gap ever, con ever questioned within the context of the royal marriage in the medieval period. This was seen as a perfectly normal. The arrangement had immediately given Matilda a new and improved status at a, a council, I'm still doing it, in Nottingham on the 17th of October 1109, Matilda, who was only seven years old, was present and was a witness to a charter, the promised bride to the King of the Romans. Matilda, she travelled to Germany in February 1110, aged only eight years old. Although Matilda was in Germany, she had yet to meet her um, husband. So it wasn't until she actually got to Germany that she finally met him. But there was no wedding just yet, as Matilda was far too young. The marrying age then was 12 years old for um, females. So Matilda was crowned Queen of the Germans on the 25th of July, 1110. Matilda, she was educated well in her new home by Archbishop Bruno as he acted as her guardian. Matilda, she had to learn two new languages. Latin was the most dominant written language throughout Western Europe, but the spoken language at Henry V's court was the dialect that is now called High Middle High German. Matilda, she was also taught about the empire and the politics. Matilda was also educated to help Henry run the empire and act as queen regent. Matilda would become known as the good Matilda. When Matilda was 12 years old, she was deemed old enough and fit enough to marry. So in 1114, Matilda married Henry V, the Roman Emperor. It's unknown if their marriage was consummated shortly after their wedding, but either way, Matilda never fell pregnant through their marriage, or definitely during her teenage years. Through her marriage to Henry, Matilda gained political experience, and in 1117, Matilda accompanied her husband to Rome where he was crowned Holy Roman Emperor and Matilda becoming Empress Matilda. And that would be the title that she would continue to use right up until her death. In 1120, Matilda was informed of the white ship disaster which killed her younger brother William and it's difficult to know if or how this had affected Matilda 
as Matilda was only eight years old when she left um, England and William would have been only six. So, and in 1122, Matilda had attempted to travel back to England to visit her father, but it never happened as Matilda would have to travel through lands that were held by Charles the Good, or Count of Flanders. Now, Flanders was the border region between the empire and France, and Charles was a vessel for the French king, and he refused Matilda safe passage. So after the White Ship disaster, Henry I hadn't named an heir straight away. Instead, he chose to marry again. And this time he married the 18-year-old Adelaide of Levan on the 29th of January in 1121. So although Henry had married Adelaide, Henry needed to focus on his succession after the death of William Adeline. The most obvious choice, which many thought Henry would choose was William Cleto, who was the son of Robert Curthoes. But Henry profoundly refused to ever elect William Cleto as his successor. Henry had many other children, the eldest being Robert Fitzroy, who was the first Earl of Gloucester, who had been unwavering loyal to his father. Robert though, he was born out of wedlock and through the church this was heavily frowned upon and Robert accepted this and he never put himself forward for the throne. Henry's only other option was to look towards his sister Adela who was the only other sibling to have produced children. Adela married Count Stephen of Blore. <coughs> you know I can't pronounce it. And she was widowed. Now Adela had four surviving sons who was William, Theobald, Stephen and Henry and several daughters. Adela's youngest son Henry had been placed in the church at only two years old. Now Adela's eldest son William which there's very little known about, he was passed over to his younger brother Theobald in receiving the lands and titles of his father. It was reported that Adela had set aside her firstborn, stating that he was deficient in intelligence and seemed second rate. So Theobald was named Count of Blore at the age of 12 and he was later sent by his mother to Henry's court and he was joined by his brother Stephen who was knighted by Henry. Both brothers had proven loyal to their uncle. They fought on his behalf on campaigns in Normandy and the only other remaining candidate for successor was Henry. Um, Matilda, who was far away in the empire, although Matilda was female, Henry wanted to be succeeded by a child of his own. Matilda was married and Henry had no intentions of having the Holy Roman Emperor on the throne of England. In 1125, when Matilda was 23, Henry V, the Holy Roman Emperor, died from what's now believed to have possibly been from cancer. King Henry I was in Normandy in the late spring of 1125 when he was informed of the death of his son-in-law. So this now put Matilda at the top of the succession. Henry could be succeeded by his own legitimate child, Although they hadn't commun although they had communicated, they hadn't seen much of each other since Matilda was only eight years old. Father and daughter were reunited in the autumn of 1125 in Normandy. Matilda, who was now back in Normandy, but after 
15 years of speaking German day in and day out, there was a slight language barrier. So Matilda would have forgotten most of her, her mother tongue, her natural language. But Matilda quickly learned how to speak her natural tongue after all that time. Now, Henry's court remained in Normandy until the end of the year, and this gave Matilda time to readjust and to see how her father reigned. Matilda and Henry returned to England in September 1126, and Matilda was now able to meet another member of her family from her past, her maternal uncle, King David of Scotland. David had always been kind to Matilda and he travelled south to show his support to his niece. It also seems that father and daughter had remained in each other's close company over the, the past year, given it gave Henry plenty of time to get to know his now adult daughter and they grew closer. Matilda also grew closer to her half-brother Robert of Gloucester. Matilda also urged Henry to remove Henry's long imprisoned brother Robert, um, Robert Curthose from the custody of Robert Bishop of Salisbury. I think I pronounced that right, hopefully. And uh, have him put in place into Robert of Gloucester's keeping. So, um, to Matilda, Robert Curthose was the most important and threatening prisoner in England. So to have him in the hands of someone she trusted would be to her advantage. Now, Henry, he agreed. So Robert Curthose was moved first to Bristol and then on to Cardiff, where he would remain confined for the rest of his life. When Matilda, with Matilda, sorry, by Henry's side, he held a meeting to have his barons swear their allegiance to his daughter, Empress Matilda, as his heir. Roger of Salisbury called out every bishop, abbot, earl and lord one by one to stand forward in front of King Henry, his wife Adelaide and Matilda and for them to swear in person in front of everyone and then this way no one could later on go well I was there but I kept quiet and say that they didn't take the oath. Stephen had gone first out of him of Robert of Gloucester, his legitimacy given him the priority. So Henry began seeking a new husband for Matilda and there's evidence that Henry had confided in with his son Robert of Gloucester for Henry, these succession issues would be much simpler if Matilda married and had one or more sons and they came of age before Henry passed away. That way, the throne would be able to go directly to Matilda's sons and the barons might be a little more accepting to the um, temporary rule of a woman if she were regent rather than regnant. But Henry, he was already in his late 50s. He needed to move quickly. Henry made an agreement with Falk, well, Falk Count of Anjou, and Matilda would marry his eldest son and heir, Geoffrey. Although Henry had Falk's um, daughter marriage to William Cleto annulled due to being too closely related, 
it meant that Matilda and Geoffrey would be related in the same degree. That um, there could have been some objections to that. But no one said a word. No one said anything. Everyone kept completely scum. So no one in England, Normandy or France ever said a single word about it. So for Matilda, the proposed marriage was unattractive to her more on a personal level. The age difference alone. In spring 1127, Matilda was 25. Geoffrey was only 13. Matilda had lived and travelled throughout Western Europe. Geoffrey was still a young boy. Then there's the difference in status. Matilda was the daughter of a king, a widow to an emperor. Geoffrey was the son of a provincial count and it's possible that Matilda may not have even wanted a second marriage. Now, there is some contemporary evidence that suggested Matilda had voiced her objections. And it was reported that Matilda was unwilling to agree to the marriage. And there was a letter from Hildebert, Archbishop of Tours, to Matilda expressing his wishes for, quote, for Matilda to stop causing so much distress for her father through her disobedience. Although Matilda's personal wishes were completely against the marriage, she was sensible and she was intelligent and she knew her position would be greatly weakened if she didn't go along with her father's wishes. She also knew that a monarch was a military leader and the one thing that Matilda was never able to do was to ride into battle ahead of her troops. She would need a man to take on that role on, our, on her behalf and that man really needed to be her husband. However much Matilda disliked the prospect, if she weren't to marry or not marry according to the king's will, any chances of her succeeding the throne would simply disappear. So Matilda, she put her ambitions ahead and her personal desires to the side and she agreed to the marriage. At the betrothal ceremony is when Matilda and Geoffrey met for the first time in May 1127. The wedding itself wouldn't take place just yet as Geoffrey was, was considered too young for the marrying age as the marrying age for boys was 14. Geoffrey's father, Falk, was stepping down as Count of Anjou, giving his title to his son. Falk was leaving for Jerusalem as the new king in 1128. Matilda and Geoffrey, they married on the 17th of June, 1128. Matilda was handed over, handed over, handed over by her father and her half-brother, Robert of Gloucester, in attendance. The wedding ceremony celebrations lasted for three weeks. The union was a disaster from the start. There was mutual dislike. The difficulties within the marriage became very clear when Matilda moved away from Anjou and returned to Normandy by the autumn of 1129. Henry was not in Normandy as he'd already returned back to England. Matilda stayed in Normandy where she continued to call herself Empress rather than Countess of Anjou. She sent letters complaining to her father and Matilda. She was in no rush to return to her husband. Geoffrey, he also made no attempts to follow his wife and he stayed 
in Anjou developing his military skills with a campaign against various rebels, rebel factions across the county. And Geoffrey also had a mistress with whom he had an illegitimate son named Hanlan, who was born in 1130. Henry, he finally returned to Normandy in 1131 and he made some effort to communicate with Matilda and he returned to England in the late summer, taking Matilda with him. Now, crossing the channel back to England at this time, there was a terrible storm. On board the ship were Henry, his wife, Queen Adelaide, Matilda, and Robert of Gloucester. The entire royal family could have been wiped out in one single storm. They all prayed. Henry vowed that if he lived, he, would, he wouldn't collect any Dane Goud for seven years and he would make a pilgrimage to the shrine of Saint Edmund in East Anglia and they all survived and according to John of Worcester the king later fulfilled his promises. On the 8th of September 1131 Henry held a council where he had Matilda's succession oath renewed uh, this had taken place long after Matilda had married Geoffrey, so the barons could not later complain of being kept in the dark. And also the oaths, they made no mention of Geoffrey being king. The decision was made by Henry and his barons, not Matilda, that she should return to her husband. It was reported that Geoffrey had been asking for her and he was prepared to receive her. Matilda, she had no choice but to return to her husband and to do her duty, which was to produce heirs for the succession. The couple, they reunited, possibly being more prepared to compromise and things had remained calm uh, enough for about a year in the autumn 11, 20, 1132 I'm going by it, came the news that both England and Normandy had been waiting for. Empress Matilda was pregnant and at the age of 31 Matilda was considered an elderly first time mother. On the 5th of March, 1133, Matilda gave birth to a healthy son and she named him Henry. Henry would later inherit England, Normandy and Anjou. Matilda wept for joy at Henry's baptism and that was the only time that it was reported that Matilda cried in public. Henry would be her favourite son of all of her life and in later life Henry would become known as Henry Fitz Empress. King Henry travelled to Normandy in summer 1133 to meet his new grandson and Matilda was soon pregnant again. She had another son named Geoffrey in, in May 1134, but his birth was extremely difficult, so much so that it's believed that Matilda was dying. Now there's a document containing an argument with her father over where she should be buried. Henry wanted Matilda to rest in Rowan Cathedral, but Matilda wanted the Abbey of Beck. Matilda recovered and at long last, she and her husband had a shared interest, their sons. A conflict was brewing between Geoffrey of Anjou and King Henry. Henry had refused to give Geoffrey any real power or even a dukedom. Geoffrey also may now have realised that he 
never, he's never going to be king. So Geoffrey had his sights on Normandy. Henry had promised him castles in Normandy's border through Matilda's dowry, but Henry hadn't yet handed them over, although Geoffrey and Matilda had been married for six years. Control of them should have been handed over once the wedding had taken place. But Henry, he had no intentions to give those castles to Geoffrey. Although they were only three castles, but they were important. Firstly, they was a symbol of Geoffrey's own increasing influence and rise and status and his independence from his father-in-law. And most importantly, they were a foothold that would provide any subsequent claim or to campaign in Normandy, holding the castles would have security over Matilda's succession. And Geoffrey's ambitions after Henry's death, Geoffrey became more insistent in his demands and this only irritated Henry even further. And Matilda, well, she was caught in the middle. But surprisingly, she chose Geoffrey. Just, and this just showing how things had changed in five years. Matilda had remained in Normandy, but in the summer of 1135, she moved back to Anjou to remain with Geoffrey whilst her father and his troops had placed themselves along the border. And in the same year, in the autumn, Matilda discovered that she was pregnant once again. In November 1135, Henry pulled back from the Anjou border just a little, where he went to his hunted lodge towards Rohan for a rest and some sport. Henry, against the advice of his doctors, had eaten a dish of eels, which disagreed with him, and he fell ill. On the Tuesday through to the Saturday, his condition worsened. Henry knew he was dying. And he confessed to his chaplain, Robert of Gloucester, had hurried to be by his father's side. And he had been ordered by Henry to take £60,000 from the treasury to pay for any outstanding wages, debt, any and any left over was to be distributed to the poor. Although Henry was suffering physically, his mind was clear. Henry's death was imminent and he made no further announcement nor written, written, written testaments. And there was a conflicting testament about what he said on his deathbed. William of Malmesbury stated that Henry had named Matilda to those barons and clergymen who were gathered around him. He was to give all of his territories to his daughter, but the deeds of Stephen, which coincidentally began at this very point, states that Henry had in fact released the barons from their oaths to Matilda. Henry had compelled the barons to swear their allegiance to Matilda and now as he lay dying, he seeked repentance from his barons. Even the deeds of Stephen being very anti-Matilda as it later turned doesn't make any specific claims that Henry had named anyone else other than Matilda as his heir. Now Matilda, she was over 200 miles away. It would take over a week for a messenger, for the fastest messenger to reach Matilda. So Robert of Gloucester was out of time to inform his sister and for Matilda to make a 
reconciliation before her father died on the night of the 1st of December, 1135. Less than one week after falling ill, Matilda was left in, ig was left in ignorance and that would prove to be an utter disaster. And that's part one. That's the end of part one. So make sure you subscribe that little red button right there. Just make sure you hit that so you don't miss part two of Empress Matilda. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of Empress Matilda. Anyway, I don't think I'm going to ramble for too long. <coughs> and just look after yourselves. Keep being amazing because you are all amazing and just keep liking and sharing and subscribing and doing all the brilliant stuff and just keep being you because you're all wonderful anyway now i'm going so look after yourselves see you all soon